The eye is an important sense organ. You're using information provided by your eyes right now to watch this. This is a horse's eye. It has a similar structure to ours. The white outer covering is called the sclera. At the front it's transparent and allows light to enter the eye. This clear part is called the cornea and through it you can see the back of the eyeball. The sclera is tough. It protects the eye and helps to give it shape. Cut a window in the back of the sclera and you can see the layer below. It's rich in blood vessels. Beneath is the retina. This is the light-sensitive part that receives images. A camera allows us to look straight through the eye. As the hand moves around, you can see how the image on the retina is upside down. Cutting into the sclera releases a clear jelly-like substance. This is the vitreous humour and it fills the main chamber in the eyeball. Cutting the eye in half completely reveals the lens. It's a clear jelly-like blob held in place by fine ligaments which surround it. The lens in a horse eye is fairly large, but just like a human lens, it's quite firm and elastic. The colour of your eye is determined by a disc of coloured tissue called the iris. In cross-section, the eye looks similar to this. The lens sits behind the cornea and the iris. The hole in the centre is called the pupil. Switch on a bright light and the iris expands, making the pupil smaller. The iris regulates the amount of light entering the eye. The retina lines the interior of the eyeball. Light entering the eye is bent by the lens and focused on the retina. The lens does this by changing shape. Remember how elastic it is. This small plastic sac filled with water is a model lens. It's hollow and attached to a syringe. Liquid can be pushed into it or pulled out of it, changing the thickness of the lens. It's clipped into place at the front of this model eye. When it's looking at a letter Y, see how the image is projected onto a screen at the back. This is equivalent to the retina. The Y is upside down. Move the object closer to the lens and the image on the retina goes out of focus. But increase the thickness of the lens and it's back in focus. When the object is moved further away, once again, it goes out of focus. Change the thickness of the lens by making it thinner, and the Y is back in focus. Fat and thin lenses focus light differently, but your lens isn't a fluid-filled sac. Instead, its shape is changed by the surrounding muscle fibres. This thin layer of white tissue at the back of the eye is the light-sensitive retina. Nerve fibres from all parts of the retina pass out of the eye through the blind spot. These fibres form the optic nerve, which carries electrical impulses to the brain and allows us to see an image. The nerve
nervous system is your body's communication network. It determines your every move. For instance, when the phone rings, you respond by picking it up. The brain and spinal cord make up the central nervous system. A complex network of nerves connects the brain and spinal cord to the rest of the body. This is the peripheral nervous system. When the phone rings, sound is detected by the ears. Messages are sent quickly along nerves to the brain. The brain analyzes the information and responds immediately by sending messages to muscles in the arm. Every movement of every muscle is controlled by the nervous system. Standing on tiptoes involves the calf muscle. When a nervous impulse from the brain reaches the calf muscle, it contracts, lifting the heel off the floor. The messages sent along each nerve consist of tiny pulses of electricity. To see this, two electrodes are attached to Alex's calf muscle. The wires are connected to a very sensitive oscilloscope. It'll pick up even the smallest pulse of electricity. The nervous impulses reaching the muscle are similar to the electricity that flows from a battery. See how applying a small electric shock to a nerve in Alex's elbow causes a response. The muscle in her hand has been fooled into thinking that it's received a message from the brain. There are some actions that you perform without even thinking. <coughs> These are called reflex actions. <coughs> A well-known reflex action is the knee jerk. Hit the knee in a particular spot and you can't help lifting your lower leg. So what's actually happening? First, stretch sensors in the muscle detect a sudden change. A nervous impulse travels along a nerve to the spinal cord. It passes through the spine, back down the leg and causes the muscle to contract. Electrodes on the thigh pick up any electrical activity. Scientists use the trace on the oscilloscope to work out the speed of the response. It takes just a thirtieth of a second. The pathway taken by a nervous impulse during a reflex action is called a reflex arc. The impulse travels in an arc through the spinal cord. It bypasses the brain, which means you don't even think about it. Reflex actions happen so quickly because they travel by the shortest route. Plants, unlike animals, don't have a complex central nervous system, yet they still respond to changes in their environment. This geranium plant has been growing under the bright lights of a greenhouse. Light has fallen onto the plant from all directions. Its leaves are evenly distributed. But place a similar geranium on a windowsill and it looks quite different. The leaves are nearly all pointing towards the window. Plants appear to grow towards the light, bending their stems and twisting their leaves to maximise the amount of light falling on them. This growth response to light is called phototropism. Three young cress seedlings are used to investigate what happens when light falls from only one direction. A box with two holes cut into it is placed over them. 
A lamp shines through one hole. A camera is pointed through the other. The camera takes a picture every few minutes. It's linked to a computer to record and store each image. Place the lid on the box and leave it for several hours. Just three hours later and the seedlings have obviously grown in a different direction. So, what did the camera see? As time passes, the crest stems are growing towards the light. Light causes cells in the crest to grow at different rates. The effect is to make the stems bend in a particular direction. In real life, a plant tends to receive light from many directions, from the window and from artificial lighting. So how will the crest respond to more than one light source? The box still has two holes cut into it, but this time a lamp is directed into each. Put the lid on and make your prediction. What do you think will happen? Three hours later and the crest seeds haven't grown towards either light source. Instead, they're pointing somewhere in between. What do you think would happen if the intensity of one of the lights was reduced? All you'd have to do is stick some tape over one of the holes. Plants also respond to gravity. The branches of this tree are growing in all sorts of directions. Some grow horizontally, but the tip of each branch always seems to be growing vertically upwards. These are the youngest parts of the tree. In general, the youngest shoots of a plant grow up, and the youngest roots grow down. This response is either called gravitropism or geotropism. See how the shoot of this crest seedling responds when it's placed on its side. To confuse the seedlings completely, you can place them on a rotating surface. It's as if the direction of gravity is constantly changing. A few hours later and the stationary seedlings are growing upwards. But when there's no obvious up or down, the seedlings grow straight out sideways. When people try to grow plants in space, how do you think shoots and roots will respond?